built up a pretty cool rock track called Superman. Today, we'll talk in depth with the Grammy Award-winning producer and mix engineer, Mike Shipley, about his in-the-box mix of Superman and much more. We'll also compare the performance of the mix on his Pro Tools HD6 system, as well as on a Pro Tools HDX DSP system. You know, engineered and mixed over the years on many different types of surfaces and consoles and analog and digital. What brought you to Pro Tools and the, and the icon that you have in your studio now? Well, primarily what brought it to me was working with one client who I do a lot of work for, Mutt Lang, because uh, he's a, um, likes to have as many options as possible. So he was one of the first people to get into the whole Pro Tools thing because of uh, the ability to constantly change things. Whereas we used to, when we change things, and Mutt is the kind of producer that uh, even in the mixing process, it's still a recording process. If nothing's finished, it's not a matter of, with him, there's no clear delineation between okay, we're finished today, let's start mixing tomorrow. Because if he decides the chorus isn't right in the middle of the mix, he will want to change the chorus. And that used to be a matter of, uh-oh, I've got to go in and chop the multi-track, the 24-track, and we have to, like, you know, it became quite an exercise. And obviously with Pro Tools, he could easily rearrange the song, he could add parts, and it became um, the obvious way to go for someone like him who who it's never finished until it's finished. So as a tape machine, it definitely changed, but you, you mix a lot in the box. I mix a lot in the box because uh, people like to be able to change what they want to hear. And so if you're in a studio on a large format console and you're in the middle of another record and a week later they want a single version of the mix or they decide that they've redone a vocal in the chorus, this way it's particularly easy to give them what they want because you can uh, recall very simply and uh, we'd do a lot of that with Mutt. You know, there'd be a call. We've got a new um, guitar part. Or so, so, and, and recalling, there's always the next factor. You get all the outboard gear. I mean, I've done it for years anyway, but it isn't push the button and be comfortably knowing that all your plugins and your, everything is going to come back. And now that the whole sound thing has improved monumentally, um, there isn't that thing in your mind anymore going, oh, well, it's, uh, it's digital, so it doesn't sound quite as good, but we can still make it be easier. Now you have the benefit of, of sonically, it's, it's being superb, and uh, the ability to be creative, um, it's just a game changer. And how about plugins? Because there, there's so many emulations of compressors and you know, tools that you've relied on through the years. Do, do they, are they constantly improving as well and bringing the game changing they constantly they're constantly improving they're always improving I still do use some hardware stuff mm -hmm. because I've just there are certain things for vocal sounds and for certain elements that maybe the emulation isn't on everything isn't there but 90 percent of it's there so there used to be large gaps before things would catch up now there are so many people working so many third party companies working on hardcore emulations and some of them are superb you know i talk about them with my friends a lot um about how close the emulations are these days to the real thing you know so uh when, when stuff's at 88.2 and that's 6k obviously the, everything sounds a whole lot better it's just now catching it's not just now that the power is catching up with the audio in a way because we used to get stuck with having larger sessions you'd have to use it as at a lesser sampling rate so therefore the plugins wouldn't sound quite as good. You'd be at 48K or 44.1 because you'd have a huge track count. Now, fortunately, with the way that Pro Tools is going, there's so much more power. So you can do things that are at a larger sampling rate, not have to compromise. Well, that's actually a great question because we had you mix this on an HD6, right. your, your HD6. Yep. At 96 kilohertz with about 60 plus tracks, you ran out of juice pretty much right at the end. Uh, no, not right at the end, right at the beginning. <laughs> because I've always got in my mind how I want to have it set up. It's never going to be the, how it's going to end up. But, but um, you're already painted into a corner of a mindset of knowing that, because the, the session was at 96K, um, it just doesn't allow for the amount of plugins. So I'm already sitting there going, how am I going to get around this? Because I really want to be able to EQ that, but I can't. HD6 is great, but it's very limiting. At the, the like rates, at the higher sampling rates. At the higher sampling rates, which is what you want to be at, because it's right. all about fidelity. I want to be having the most pleasing sound that I can. And to me, 88.2 just seems to be the place I like to sit 
comfortably. Right. And um, I couldn't. And so we now took your HD6 session and um, we've opened it up on this HDX at, on half a card. We've removed half it. Half a card. So, so yeah. maybe you're, you're going to talk about that a little bit that you, you have a project coming up that you're really excited to, to be mixing on an HDX2 because it's just a high sampling rate and a ton of tracks, right? Yeah, because now I can get on with a record that really needs a lot of detail and it has a, lot, has a large track count. No compromise. There's always been a compromise until HDX has come along. The movie you're working on, was there was a medley that was three different songs with three different sets of drums cut together. Yeah. So what might normally be 60 to maybe 80 tracks is now tripled, right? Uh, for this film Rock of Ages, it was a compilation of three songs, but they wanted to have as close to the original sounds for each song within one piece. So there's three sets of, sets drums. of drums, which is on 20 tracks. So there's, there's at least 60 sets, 60 tracks of drums on their own right. to make up this one piece, let alone whatever samples that I feel need to be added, if they do or not, to make it have that feel of the original, because we always use samples back in the 80s to have, you know, so you can't compromise. You've got to give them what they want. So uh, that's, really max, that's really maxing out the way to work, but we still had to get the job done. So let's maybe take it back since you brought up the drums uh, thing a bit. What were the challenges of our song? Uh, I, I believe we kind of discussed some of the, the miking of the drums or the, the things. Are there any tips that you would give people about that always tricky hi-hat snare drum relationship? You'll, you'll get a lot of songs in, and yours was one of them, where um, there was an awful lot of spill on the snare, for example. A hi-hat, the guy was on the ride, so maybe his ride was real close. I don't know how the how the thing was set up, but all I know is what that does is bunch up everything in the middle. Mm -hmm. So you, you lose the depth of field, you lose the stereo width, and it's fighting against the frequencies of the vocal, you know, or whatever other information you want to put in the middle. So uh, right. drum miking is an art, and you used to be able to go in and have the time to right. experiment and to micro move the snare mic to make sure that the axis of it was, I mean, you know, it's a little bit different now. Things are done a little bit faster. Sure. You know, and, and we can fix it in Pro Tools later. And we can fix it in the mix, you know, and, yeah. and, um, which is also true because you can do a whole lot more than what you used to, but it's still great to get raw tracks mm -hmm. that are... Good raw tracks. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Uh, we're live now in Pasadena, back at the Firehouse Studios again. We really want to thank them for uh, having us. And uh, with me is uh, Mike Shipley. Hi. Our, Our special, special guest, uh, Superman Mixer. <laughs> and then uh, Gil Cowing, also from Avid, uh, who helped, uh, as you saw, the tracking part of this, uh, build the song and everything. So we're really excited to have you here. Uh, we got a bunch of questions stacked up for Mike. So let's get started. The first one is um, from Dean. Uh, did you ever consider the HD Native card, or was it necessary to go to HDX? And this is a great kind of question because you, you, you did, did on uh, Rock of Ages, right? Yep, I went to the, I, went, I needed more power than what the HD6 system, so I went, I went, we went to the native system, and uh, which was great, but still actually um, I needed more power. I needed the ability to uh, uh, use more plugins and the track counts were really high, so uh, I actually, uh, native was fantastic, but I needed um, HDX just for the power. I already cool. did actually, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, That's a, a great, great question. question. All, All right, right. so, um, uh, on our track, you did replace, or you, you added some snares and some kicks, and so, so the question came in, um, you, you used to use uh, other sample trigger, SDE 3000 or whatever. How did you go ahead and lay in the, the, the samples? Uh, I did it a new way this time. There's a, there's a new, uh, we usually go in and, and sample accurately, replace sample, you know, add stuff and never replace it. Right. Add it and blend it and right. make, make sure the tuning of it's right compared to the original snare if it needs to be or whatever. But these days, um, there's a, actually Stephen Slate makes a, an amazing um, sampler. Cool. So I can dump my samples in there and tune them and we can line it up so it's sample accurate and so uh, that's how we go about it. Cool. Write cool. in all the dynamics and so forth. Let's, Let's see here. Uh, any mic freeze that you prefer for drums when, when you know, back to your tracking days? Um, the, uh, that's an interesting question. Um, just the fatter the better. I mean, I, I, I like new mic freeze for drums. I like for, for, um, 
What I like more than anything is the old English Mike Priggs, actually, like Cadac, those kind of things that are a little harder to get a hold of these days, but really had a very unique sound to them. So uh, I, 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 I travel around with those. Yeah. Uh, and uh, th these days, specifically for drums, um, I use the Dave Hill Mike Priggs because uh, they just have this uh, extra body. Um, that's, that's cool. cool. And, you know, we, we actually, actually got a great, great question about, um, about, um, about the low end and sort of creating, creating the, the bottom that you're looking for. Is there any techniques that, that, that you really rely on? There's no magic bullet, I think we were talking about earlier, about achieving the kind of low end that you hear in your head, right? I like a lot, I like a lot of bottom end. <laughs> I've always liked fat, fat mixes. Doesn't mean you can't shave it off afterwards, but I like fat mixes. And how do you achieve it? I don't know, you just have a sound in your head and there's, it, there's a, these days, thanks to Pro Tools, there's numerous ways, you know, you can use transient designers, um, boxes like that, that get, you know, there's, there's so many ways to shape, there's harmonic, right. all kinds of harmonic um, emulations that really do work and will add the meat to the bottom end. And what did you, and on our track with the bass, we had provided you um, a DI signal and a bass amp, and I think you just went with the DI and sort of chose to enhance it with some plugins, right? No, I just use the amp signal. Oh, just the amp signal? Okay. Yeah, I just use the amp signal and, and uh, a compressor that I use, um, the, the, the stay level that I have. No, this, this was in the box, so right. what I used was um, a uh, a thing called Fat, Fat C compressor. That's another U.S. compressor, which I think works fantastic on the bass. And cool. Because uh, you, you can, there's a, a blend. There's a nice blend button between uh, original signal and amount of compression, so you can just get ex get it exactly right. Right know. on. Okay, cool. Yeah. In fact, maybe we could switch to the slide that shows really the the, the plugins that Mike relied on. Um, it's kind of just a general list. There was a lot of U.R.S. Channel Strip Pro. That's sort of your your go-to. Um, Box. It has a lot of settings to choose from, right? Well, you know, it has a lot. It has an amazing amount of settings to choose from, and you have to learn to use it. Right. It's a very deep box, you know, and I've got I've got very used to it. But uh, I was limited with the HD, so I couldn't use the plugins I wanted anyway. So, uh, yeah, there wasn't enough room for No, I would have actually chosen if if I was doing the mix now from scratch in HDX, I would have not. I would have used a whole different set of plugins. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, primarily, I would, I would have been able to experiment more um, rather than get the spinning wheel and it's like... Sure, you know, and it's waiting. Like, and and some, some plugins are a lot more... Uh, use a lot more... Shuffling if you're rebooting. Power, so I would have to steer, steer away from those, but I would uh, yeah. use the... As, as a basis, um, uh, I would use the, the ERF channel strip and then... Add or take from there. Yeah. Cool. Let's uh, take, take another, another question here. So, on um, basically how you lay out your sessions, you do use several different parallel channel processing. So not just on the drums, correct? Not just on the drums. No, I'll use it on vocals um, if it needs it. I'll, I'll have it set up for a lot of different things because it's easy to set up. Right. It's one of those things that's. Uh, yes, I have a. I have parallel compression for the drums for sure. I have like f usually it's a five or six different compressors or things I can go into as well to blend in with the, with the kit. They're pretty much set up as standard um, yeah. you know, with the TC plug with all kinds of different uh, uh, UAD plugins and so forth. But um, I have it set up for the bass, I have it set up for vocals and uh, try it and see if it works or not. You know, right, so right. 